You, have you seen the movie Contact? I, of course, over and over again. Why, oh. why am I an astrobiologist, you think? Okay. Three times in that movie with Jodie Foster's character, what was her name? Ellie, right? Ellie had her father and then her boyfriend and then I, somebody else, oh, the little child at the end. Mm -hmm. The question is asked, uh, do, you think there's a, do you think there's anybody out there? And the answer came back from those three people, well, if, if there is no one out there, it would be an awful waste of space. What do you think of that answer? I think it's a very inspirational answer. I think it's a very realistic answer, too. So you think that a universe without anybody that's human-like is mm -hmm. a waste of space? I don't think uh, that quote emphasizes that it, the other life form needs to be human. So it has to be able to talk to it. She's looking for signals. They have to be, have technology. But microbes can send signals. You know, microbes talk. Bacteria well, she's talks. Not, well, she's not looking, looking for microbes, though. I think the implication is when they say anybody, I think they mean somebody who can talk and have a conversation well, with Well, I mean, for the sake of that story, I guess microbes would make it better actors, right? So you're making a story like that, you make it human-centric. So that's normal. Although I know some bacteria that could act better than a yeah. lot of actors. But, but I think that, uh, I, I think Carl Sagan did not place humans in the, in the center of that code either. If I'm oh, not mistaken, I, I, I would guess he did because he, Carl Sagan, repeated over and over again that humans are the way that the universe is becoming aware of itself, and we usually don't associate self-awareness with bacteria. That's what I would assume. I mean, I, or maybe I just um, spent too much time in the lab, but I think <laughs> <laughs> I, I think if if, bac if a bacteria can, um, if a bacterial species can form ecology with a different um, bacterial species or viruses, and if they can communicate with each other at the chemical level, which is what we do too, right? You and I are talking, but it's really chemical. Um, why we don't think of that as a form of uh, communication? Yeah, she's right. A big empty universe, it's kind of elegant, but you could have a much smaller version of it and it would still be pretty much just as elegant. A universe that big being empty is pretty much a waste. Oh, I don't think that's a very good argument. It could be that presupposes that somebody thinks it's a waste of space. I mean, <laughs> well, some people could, do. <laughs> but matter of fact, a lot of people empathize. They think that's a, oh, quite clever and insightful. Yeah, that, that that argument goes way back in history. I think maybe even uh, maybe even Kepler said that about the moons of Jupiter or something like that. That that would be a waste. Why would they be created if if they weren't inhabited? But by inhabited obviously, by people, I by guess. By people, Okay, yes. so right. if they're inhabited by fungi, then it would still be a waste of space or something. Maybe to Kepler, not to me. I mean, I, right, maybe right. maybe you need the whole universe to get us, you know. I'm totally open on that. It's totally possible. All I'm, all I'm saying, what other people, SETI people are saying, and many people, is that we ought to find out. What's the waste there? That's, that's my, that was my understanding. So what, why do you think if humans don't exist there, so it's a waste? Yeah, I don't understand what the waste would be there. Okay. I would say if we are alone, then there must be something more to the original life that I'm not, I'm not seeing because the chemistry that I'm seeing right now that looks like it could give rise to life looks relatively simple. And so I just don't see why it can't happen on other planets. Waste of space implies that space should be used and there is some set of rules saying what you should do with all your space, none of which we have any idea about. So I would think just from a probabilistic point of view, if there are that many billions upon billions of planets, it seems odd that there wouldn't be life, some of them, which is a slightly different argument. But the waste of space, I mean, if you're talking about waste of space in your house, it's because space is valuable and there's someone like you who wants to use it. Um, but it's not clear either of those two things apply in the universe. Well, I'm, I'm not religiously inclined, so I think it could be any which way, the universe, you know. We could be um, extra the, ex the almost extraordinary anomaly. As I've said, I, I think there's a lot of life around. It just might not be the kind of life we can talk to or communicate with. Um, I don't think it would be a waste of space if if we were rare or, or life was rare, I think what the response we should have to that is not, not that it's a waste of space, but rather 
the rarer we are, the more we should cherish this extraordinary biosphere and the more we should seek not to uh, degrade and destroy it through our collective actions. That's the kind of crazy fine tuning that basically makes human beings this horribly centric thing where if, if we're the only things here, then the universe has been around for 13.8 billion years, give or take. If in all of that time, our several thousand year old species that has wrecked havoc and ruined cultures and has issues with colonialism, if we're as advanced intellectually as it gets and there isn't something else out there making art, making poetry, making things that are beautiful and good, then we're just a whole bunch of empty chemical reactions that only on one world figured out how to overcome in our own small space this problem of entropy. It's a flick. It, I can see... Well, Carl Sagan was in, in, you know, very much oh, involved in this. No, you can, see, you can see Carl Sagan's wish to be a storyteller with a certain message in that. You can, unfortunately, you see all the device of writers writing, which is not, you can't fall into a story when you can see all the devices. <laughs> that's, that's just a consequence of getting old, right? There are very few things that are still new when so many things are recycled. So mm -hmm. you don't tell young people about that and you hope that they just don't notice it so that they can, en <laughs> they can enjoy them. they get old and jaded. They can enjoy them <laughs> for the first 15 times before they realize that the 16th time is a repetition. 